This is a Tiffany floor lamp that I retouched when I was working at Christie's in New York. This is the raw shot, the way I received it from the photographer. This is all the retouching. It's all contained in one folder. So normally what most people like to do for a number of reasons is not work on the background image, but always have that in reserve to show before and after and also so that you can always go back without having to trouble someone. There's a, a fair number of layers. First thing we did was we made a background copy with just a small amount of retouching on it, just general. So there really wasn't any other retouching there. In here, there are a number of files representing different exposures. That was for the darks probably, more detail in the lights, and uh, here's another one. In essence, the photographer normally takes multiple shots on a tripod so that the image doesn't move and that the retoucher can then composite something exposed for the light, something exposed for the darks, and something exposed for the middle tones and mask out the areas that are unnecessary. This is a mask for the background. Where the mask is black, it's closed. Where it's gray, it's semi-open. And where it's white, it's completely open. Actually, the curves weren't even used on this. You can see the blending mode is set to multiply. Which inherently burns everything in. And there, there was no more needed to be done. If I wanted to just simply do something to modify it, I could make it 50% or 10% or 100%, or or but this is what was approved. We have uh, metal curves here, and that the metal curves, uh, we use the mask to just modify them in certain areas. And the metal curves are just, uh, you can see, the overall tonal or gamma is adjusted in the composite CMYK channel. Uh, cyan was pulled down just a pinch. The magenta was pulled up a pinch. It depends on what monitor you're looking on, who the art director is, uh, who likes it yellow, who likes it green. But this is a very flexible way to do it. And I'll just undo that. So there were our metal curves. Uh, I can hide this these marquees just by going Command H. Okay, then we wanted to bring out some more greens. We used uh, selective color for the greens and plus cyan, minus magenta, plus yellow, m minus black. Set it to absolute. You get different effects, sometimes rather strikingly different effects if you use absolute or relative. So, as far as I can tell, the only channel that was used there was the green channel. Uh, this is soft light, which just, see, soft, uh, soft light, if I set this to normal, you can see it's rather a horrible effect, but when you set it to overlay or soft light, soft light's a little more subtle than overlay. Or, I mean, some people might have wanted a vivid light or a linear light, but anyhow, soft light is what we used. And again, uh, did that on a curves layer. So basically just pulling up the lights. A little more selective color. Sometimes you go round by round, so you're always adding adjustments on top of adjustments because everything was sort of okay to a certain point but some c corrections were added so you don't want to lose what's underneath. If you look in here we have a, a high pass layer which gives us a sharpness and the high pass layer is at 100 set to overlay. In order to make a high pass layer you can just um, you take a snapshot, let's say, of the uh, full document. Say OK. And then you, now that's the snapshot I just made, and I use that as my history resource. So now I can let's say, make a new layer and just call it New Sharp. Say OK. 
fill that with history, and I could just say normal. Now you can see that this is a composite of the, the whole file. So now we're going to go to filter, other, high pass. You can always add more sharpness later, but uh, start out, let's just say we'll start with two, or maybe one and a half was okay. Say okay. So that looks silly, but when you change it to like say overlay, it just adds enough sharpness and uh, there are a number of ways you can modify it. You can um, go into blending modes and let's say you want it, if you hold down the option key and spread those, you can uh, modify the areas that are affected. There's before and after. That's one way to do it. Uh, another way to modify it is to go to soft light. And you see the blending mode I used to put those icons there. So let's just put this back without any blending. So here, I mean, you could uh, say instead of being 100%, it could be 50% or 10%. Um, or we can go to overlay if you want it sharper. Or you can uh, duplicate it. Now it's going to be twice as sharp. You can uh, make the second one maybe half as much, or maybe 25%. Uh, and if you really like it, you can merge those two layers, and there's your new sharp. Without using a smart object, this is the preferred way to sharpen things without doing anything destructive. Now the only problem is if you're going to do any work, if you're going to retouch here, you're going to see the sharpening over it and it's going to leave artifacts. So you'll have to resharpen it. So this is why we use sharpening at the end because um, you'll see things and you can't get rid of them. It's because it's on the sharp layer. And finally, uh, we added a little tone. There's a photo filter and a, and a curve just to sweeten it up at the end. By the time I got to the top two or three layers, I probably had the majority of all the comments and, uh, and suggestions. And so there were just a couple of little minor things to do. A little bit of sharpening, a little bit of color tweaking. And of course I keep everything in one folder so you can always show someone here, that's what you gave me, this is what I'm giving you. It's really helpful because when there are a lot of files to work on, a lot of things get said, so it's always easier if you're in the visual business to, to be able to just say this to this. And it saves a lot of time. And that was that file. So I'm going to close this without saving it. We had a detail. This was a closer shot. And again, pretty much all the same principle. These are all, let's see, let's shut this off. Let's just kill all these masks. So that was very dark. And that one gave us a little more detail here, and this one gave us a little more detail there. So uh, by using these masks, we can add or subtract whatever we want. And uh, if we change our mind and we need to bring something back, we can always go back to our brushes. And here, uh, in this case, I didn't duplicate the background, but I, I didn't touch it either. You can always protect your background by um, well, you can make it a layer and then lock it, so you you can't you can't do anything to it. Let's just take a brush and you see it turns to a lock. The only thing that was different here is we had a uh, a dodge layer, which again is uh, you just fill a layer with um, a neutral gray and turn it to overlay or sometimes soft light, and then just use uh, black black or white and it just uh, kind of burns and dodges things and if you ever if you ever feel like you've gone too far you can take your brush sample the neutral gray and you can see I'm taking away some of those adjustments that I put in here so this is a handy way to burn and dodge things again without committing anything to there just in case keep everything separate so it's quickly adjusted you can go back or forward
In a production environment, there are many, many changes, so it's best to spend a little more time and build a flexible file that can be changed quickly. And that pretty much is the end of the Louis Tiffany story from Christie's in New York. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.